Hi everyone! In this video, we will review how to create documents within events. Documents are how I detail an event in Triple C, and the information added will push to my reporting. Documents are also how I can share information on an event with both my guests as well as my team. These documents detailed by users in Triple C are going to include all of the pricing, event notes, billing details, terms and conditions, and any attachments that I've added. Now that I've created an event in Triple C, I'm going to click into the Documents tab to detail it by adding menu items, notes, and additional communications. I will click Add a Document to this event over here on the right to start. This template can be thought of as the editing stage of documents. As a Triple C user, I can come through and detail out the documents with as much or as little information as I have at the time. Triple C documents are customizable to fit my business needs best. In a later video, we will go over how to customize documents in site settings. At the top here is an automatically generated box with my guests and my contact information. Below are some basic event details. Both of these boxes are going to pull the headers at the top of my different document layouts. Throughout the document template, I will see two different types of fields for me to input information. The first will be text boxes. These are intended for me to input any event notes that I have. Some popular examples of event notes would be general special instructions, setup notes, and billing notes. There is also a text box intended for my kitchen staff to note of any allergies or special requests on the menu. Typically, these notes can only be seen on an internal layout called the kitchen sheet. On any of these text boxes, I can stylize the notes by making them bold, changing size or color, using bullets or numbers to organize, inserting hyperlinks, or adding photos from my file library. For example, I might add a popular floor plan from my file library to the setup notes on this event. The second type of field to input information will be pick list fields with options to add from a pick list or add freehand line items. These boxes are intended for adding event charges or pricing. Popular examples of pick lists that I might be adding from would be food and beverage menus, equipment rental, or room rental pricing. If I click Add from Pick List, all of the preloaded pricing from my settings is going to appear. I can click into each of these lists and either add the items individually or all at once by clicking Check All. If my pick lists have headers, as we see here with first course, entrees, and desserts, and I want those headers to show up in my documents, I want to make sure that I am selecting them in addition to my other line items. Once added, I can edit the description of any item or adjust the pricing. It is important to note that if I am changing these here in my events documents, this will only make a change for this event. It will not impact existing or future events with the same pick list. I can expand each item to adjust the billing that defaults from settings and add discounts as well. We will get into more detail on discounting line items in a later video. I want to be sure to put a quantity next to any charge that has a price associated with it so that I will see a total populate. If I'm adding a charge that is not an existing pick list, I can always utilize add freehand and manually type in that quantity description, price, and assign a menu item category before adding. Toward the bottom is my billing widget. Here I see the subtotal calculating a total of the rows above. Here is where I can also adjust or delete billing details per event, and these changes will not affect my settings or other events. For example, if I do not need gratuity included in this event, I can simply delete it here from this document's billing widget without it affecting any other events documents. Below the billing details is my grand total, which is the total of everything above it. Next will be any deposits that were built into my documents. For any help needed with adding additional deposits, please contact the support team. On each event, I can change the amount of the deposit and set a due date. It is important to know that if I'm entering a percentage for the deposit amount, this is going to calculate from my grand total. Finally, I will review my terms and conditions for this event. The terms that show by default are set up in my document settings, but can be adjusted per event and will not impact my settings or any other events. If my group utilizes different terms and conditions per event type, 
I can set up what are called content templates or saved text to easily drop into this event. Content templates can be set up for any frequently used text. When I'm finished putting in the information that I have, I want to make sure that I click save so that these changes stick. Whenever I need to change the document on this event, I will come back into the Documents tab and click into the Contract and Event Order title to do so. When I make those updates, any changes will push to all of my layouts at once. If I want to see how this information is going to look on the guests end before I share with them, I can click into the names of any of the layouts to check out what the live version of each document looks like. In the next video, we will cover how to share this information with guests. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to our support team, support at triplec.com, or by clicking on the help question button on the top right corner of any screen in Triple C.